Welcome to Walk by Faith with me, your host, Les Walker. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we must have faith in God to please Him in all times. So what you say, you and I take a pleasant walk through faith in the Word of God. Let's go. Musician. I want you to be encouraged. God is working it out in your favor. Amen. How you like your job, Sister Nina? She loves it. <laughs> she loves it. Amen. Hallelujah. She loves it. Now that's a testimony. You can say you love your job. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 11 and 1. Let's stand. <clears throat> Let's stand and we'll pray and do our affirmation. But that's where we'll start. Begin to teach the word of God. Amen. Man. Hebrews 11 and 1. That's where we'll start. Father, we thank you now for your goodness, mercy, and your grace. Have your way now. Move by your spirit. Let your will be done. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. There's nobody like our God in heaven or earth. You sit high. Look low. Heaven is your throne. Earth is your footstool. You're in control of everything. Now, Father, we thank you now. Let your sweet anointing come in. Move the man, Leslie Walker, out of the way. Let your anointing shine. Holy Spirit, come in. Have a seat. Have your way. You lead and guide this service. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. We give you praise that your people shall be blessed by the word thereby. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hold up your Bibles. Hold up your Bibles. <clears throat> Let's do our affirmation. Hold your Bibles up. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I, am I, am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer. Not a doubter. I am a doer. Not just a hearer. And my life is the better. After having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 1, when you have it, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11. And one. Amen. Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jump down to verse six. But without faith, it is impossible. Somebody say impossible. impossible. Say impossible again. Impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Simply for a subject today. How to win the faith fight. How to win the faith fight. Many of us have been in a faith fight over the last several months. But most of us have won the faith fight we were in. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, for we know that some things, most things, the majority of things, all things work together for good. For who? Them that love God. And for them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. You know, I, I just have to use my, my daughters and sons as examples. Uh, Nina, may I use your testimony as an example, please? Amen. I remember when Nina was, was looking for a job. And, uh, you know, she went on a couple, three interviews. And she really wanted one or two of those jobs. And she didn't get them. And you know, like anybody else, when you want something, you don't get it. You're a little re dejected and rejected and you kind of wonder why I'm qualified and I should have got it and all this kind of stuff. But the, the truth of the matter is, 
is that the job God had for Nina was sitting down the road all the time. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Now, I wonder if she'd have got one of the other jobs. Could she have boldly proclaimed like she did today? I love it. So then God, all the time, was preparing Nina for the desires of her heart. She works for a Jewish organization, so she gets a lot of days off. <laughs> she gets a lot more days off than I do, because I work for Gentiles. <laughs> they take it all our days. But she's happy. Atmosphere is good. You know, she dresses down. She's happy. But God had it worked out. All the time. Amen. Same for some of you that are looking for jobs. God has it worked out right now. Amen. He has the job for you right now, down the road. All we have to do is persevere in the faith fight to get to it. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is faith, Pastor? Faith gives existence to what we're hoping for. That's what faith does. Faith gives us existence to what we're hoping for. Y'all understand that? Amen. It gives legitimacy to the thing that we're hoping for. Faith makes what we're hoping for real. Faith makes what we're hoping for possible and gives reality to those things we desire even though we cannot see them with our natural eye. She couldn't see that job she has today. She didn't know it existed. God did. So it sounds to me, according to her testimony, God did exceeding and abundantly above all she could ask or think. But look at God. That wasn't necessarily what she was looking for. But look at God. When she stumbled into it, she said, I kind of like this. I think the first day she went to work, she overdressed. <laughs> he probably looked, where did this woman come from? <laughs> Amen. But that's just like God. He will give us the desires of our heart. Though we can't see them in the natural, we see them clearly in the spirit. You have to see yourself working on the job that you desire. You've got to see yourself. I can, I can see myself doing that. I like that. I see myself doing that. Then you have to confess every day, that's my job. Amen. For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of our testimony, by our words we are justified, and by our words we are condemned. We can have what we Say, because nothing happens until we speak. Well, this is a good class today. Y'all must have missed the teacher. But y'all had a good substitute. She was a good substitute teacher, wasn't she? Oh, okay, she can come back and teach again. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So then, Pastor, how do we obtain the faith that you're talking about? Okay, let's find out. Let's, let's look at Romans 10. Romans Ten, just a couple of books back to the left from where we are now. Romans ten, Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor, how do I obtain faith? Do I obtain faith by just going to church? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do I obtain faith by just going to any church? Absolutely not. Can I just have any preacher? Absolutely not. I'm going I'm to give you a revelation today, and you may believe it, you may not. But believe me, uh, I am anointed of God, and uh, the words that come out of my mouth do have substance. Amen. You can't pick your pastor no more than you can pick your daddy. Amen. God has to give you a pastor after his own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what his promise was. I will give you pastor. I will give you. I will give you a pastor. Does anybody couldn't pastor y'all? 
Y'all aren't troublemakers. You aren't bad members. But you have specific needs, and you need a specific pastor. You need a pastor that you can have a relationship with, that you can call and talk to, that has time for you. Okay, let's see. How do we get faith? Okay, Romans. Romans said, and it's part of our, our affirmation. Now, faith comes by hearing, and how? Hearing by what? The word of God. So the more word I hear, the more faith I obtain. The more faith I obtain, the more I'm able to go through. The more, able, the more I'm able to go through, the farther I can run the race. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Say that. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith doesn't come by singing. Faith doesn't come by preaching. Faith doesn't come by dancing. Faith doesn't come by cooking in the kitchen or cleaning the church. Those are acts of faith. Faith without is dead. So in other words, if you have faith, you will do something. You have, if you want faith, you will come hear the word of faith. Amen. Let's see. Let's read. Romans 10 and uh, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How you go call Jesus if you don't believe him? There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. But the name of who? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jehovah can't do it. Now I love Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Tishniku, Jehovah El Elyon, Jehovah Rapha. All those Jehovahs. I love that. But no other name is given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. But the name of Jesus. The Bible says, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father, Jehovah. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. That's how you get saved. You don't get saved because you stop doing this and stop doing that. You should stop once you get saved. But you don't get saved that way. You get saved because you call upon the name of Jesus. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So then, how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? If you've never heard Jesus preached, how do you believe it? You have to hear it. It has to go in your ear gate, then it drops down to your heart. And then you start to produce fruit that's meat for repentance. How, see these are the great hows of the scripture. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a what? What? Oh, you kind of need to preach. Oh, you can't be your own pastor? That's what some idiot on the assembly line would tell you. I don't got to go to church. God know my heart. Yeah, he, he certainly does. That's why he told Jeremiah to write, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. Your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Why do you think a man steals? A couple of reasons. Number one, he could steal because he legitimately has a need. And he can't financially satisfy that need. Or he could just be a thief because stealing is in his heart. He just has the heart of a thief. There are people, what do you call them, kleptomaniac? That's what you call them? <laughs> They'll steal your false teeth <laughs> off the mantelpiece. They think it's gold in them. He's just a thief. Because that's in his heart. 
It's in his heart to steal. No, no man knows your heart, but one thing about it, this word knows your heart. <clears throat> this word right here knows your heart, and if the man or woman of God is anointed, they know what's in your heart, and the way they know what's in your heart, because it comes out of your mouth. Amen. Out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart speaks. Get you in the office, set you down, you just start talking. Just start talking. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just talking. You just tell it all. Hallelujah. How shall they hear without a. How shall the preacher preach except he be sent? I didn't say when. I say sent. Whole lot of them went. Because they got mad with their past. Because they thought they could do it better than the past. Because they didn't want to sit and wait on God to send them out. They just went. And the sad part about it, they had enough foolish, ignorant people to follow them when they went. So now all y'all in trouble. Because the Bible's right. The leaders of these people caused them the error, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Amen. So now, how, how do, Pastor, how do we obtain the faith? We obtain the faith of God by hearing the word of God. That's how we obtain it. Brother Leon, come to church. You come to church, God will bless you. That life out there ain't for you not for you. There's something that drew you here today. Because I think you're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Of doing the same thing over and it ain't working. It may work for some, but it ain't going to work for you. I see an integrity in your heart that God is drawing out. Come out. Come out. Young people, come out. It's time to stop playing church. It's time to do church. And when I say do church, I don't mean come here and sit on these wooden benches singing kumbaya. I mean, it's time to get into the kingdom, use your gifts, and let God use you. Amen. And I'm telling you, you will miss nothing but jail, venereal diseases, frustration, <laughs> pregnancy. Huh? What is it? Let me look like that. <laughs> Take care, old boy. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we get faith, and faith is obtained by hearing. So now, Pastor, is it enough just to obtain faith? No, there are some things that must be done once we obtain faith. Let's look at uh, Hebrews 4 and 1. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're a word church, so we teach the word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You enjoying this? Amen. Or am I boring you? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 1. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> you and I cannot walk this walk by ourselves. If you and I are not in the position to enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding, we are going to spend our life perpetually toiling, trying to make something happen. The writer says, there is a peace for the people of God, and there is a rest. Let's read. What did I say? Hebrews 4 and 1? Yes, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So there's a rest God has that we obtain through faith. Amen. You know, I'm learning not to worry about stuff I cannot change. Amen. Why are you worried about it? 
And if you go worry about it, why are you praying about it? Can't do both. You let it go. Let God. I'm learning to keep my mouth off certain situations. Just let God work it out. Because see, when God works it out, God won't have to repent. See now, you know, if you ain't completely delivered, you done went cussed and said all kind of things you shouldn't have said. Now you got to go back and repent. <laughs> Start all over. You know, all that kind of stuff. No, you keep your mouth off of it. Say, if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemy to be at peace with. Amen. Keep your mouth off of it. Those that I pray for for a job, don't worry about how you will get a job. Here's what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to ask God for the job you want. Amen. Number two, I want you to look every day. Every day. Every day. Every Somebody say every day. Every day. Now, you make a job out of looking for a job. Amen. Got a resume? Update it? Okay. Sister Nina, help him update his resume. She's a graphic expert. She'll make it real fancy for you. Just give her a little, a little offering. Amen. Now we're we're, we're a commonwealth. We bless each other. When it comes to each other, we don't look for hookup. <laughs> we gotta get out that hookup mentality. That's a pole mentality. I want the hookup. Ain't no hookup. I'm saying, look, can, can, I, can I talk to y'all? I'm talking to sons and daughters, right? Amen. Amen. Get out that hookup mentality. Amen. We're walking in blessedness. What I do for another, God will cause to happen for me. Amen. It's called paying forward. Amen. Now, when she blesses you, you start working, bless somebody else. Okay, let's see. Well, pastor, my faith ain't working. Well, pastor, did I finish that? I didn't? Huh? Y'all messed me up? What did y'all do? Why didn't y'all tell me? Why you gonna play me like that? <laughs> Hebrews 4, I'm still there? Oh, okay, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Tenfold, I got you. Amen. Verse 2. For unto us, say unto us, was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So we get it, those that are of faith, we get it. They get the same gospel. But it doesn't work for them because this Bible says they didn't mix it with faith. Son, daughter, it's going to be no good if you don't use what I tell you. Amen. You have to believe that you receive. Yeah, right. You got to have a swagger when you go in there. Like, I'm ready to work. Smart. Where the job at? <laughs> Who working? Where they working at? I'm ready. But you go looking like you want to work. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you know, when we went down to the job fair uh, a week ago, over two days we had over 3,000 people come through there. There was a homeless lady that came through, a bag lady, you call her, I guess. This woman had two degrees, but she was a bag lady. We got to the table. We didn't, we didn't differentiate between who we were going to talk to and who we didn't. We talked to everybody who came to the table. We said we had to ask everybody basically the same scripted question. Do you have a degree? She said, yeah, which one? <laughs> so she, she she pulled out her credentials. She had a, ma a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in teaching. What's the difference? The difference is maybe she doesn't have access to faith. I don't want you to believe everybody is poor is poor because they want to be poor. No, that's not the case. People just fell on unfortunate circumstance that they had nothing to do with and could not control. That's all. 
You're blessed because you're in a place where the teaching priest teaches on faith. So he says here, for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. They heard it just like we did. But between hearing it and doing it, something happened. Because as soon as the word is sown, immediately the enemy comes to snatch it. And the enemy's going to talk to y'all. That little bald head man don't know you're talking about. Don't believe that. Ain't no jobs out there. Don't you dare believe that, son. There's plenty of jobs out there. I guarantee you, you go looking like you want to work, talk like you got some sense, respectful, articulate, you'll get hired. I told y'all the other day, in a week, Val will be promoted. Did you get promoted? Say that then. I am a prophet. I just don't do yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Enemy fought. Enemy fought. Enemy fought. Enemy fought. You know. But when you anoint it, let them fight. When you anoint it, your word carry weight. You understand? So guess who my boss's chief counselor is? The Reverend. Amen. Amen. So my boss is saved, so he understands in a multitude of counsel, yeah. there's safety. So you say, I got to have my chief counsels around me, yeah. and your word carries weight with me. Pastor Walker, who do you think ought to be promoted? Man, who else? Sister Joan. Amen. What about this one? Sister Joan. <laughs> what about that one? Sister Joan. Amen. Got any more? Yeah. Sister Joan. Amen. Two other people in my department getting ready to get promoted. Because they honor the anointed. Amen. Had one man come to work. Come to work, son. He was going through chemotherapy. But he said, because I love you, pastor, I'm not going to leave you short. I'm going to come to work every day. Amen. Taking chemo, brother. Wow. But his head never fell out. Amen. He never threw up. Amen. Never got sick. Amen. Just got a little weak. Because of the anointing. Amen. The anointing destroys the yoke. They ain't me. It's the anointing. Amen. So, you know. So, Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Philip. Philip got promoted. And uh, Hawk. A couple of more getting ready to get promoted. They work under me. See? You know. Heart of the, heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it whatsoever way he will. See, I'm telling you, y'all stick with the anointed. Y'all will go places. Amen. As I go up, y'all will go up. Amen. That's not just written in there. That's for real. Amen. Can I move on now? Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, pastor, why, why isn't my faith working? Why, pastor, it doesn't seem to be working with me. Uh, well, I'm going to show you why it's not working. Well, one reason it's not working, and really the main reason why it's not working, if we look at Galatians 5 and... Uh, Galatians 5 and 5, we'll see why it's not working. Galatians 5, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Galatians 5 and 5. Faith without works is dead. Anybody? When I talk about people who don't have jobs, anybody that you have an all against, you've got to forgive them. Amen. Amen. I don't care what they did to you. You've got to forgive them. So that God will forgive you. Amen. 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 See, I can't get too many amens on that, brother. Because yeah, I think that we just think they're a situational forgiveness. Yeah. Well, pastor, you just don't understand what they did to me. Whatever they did. What they did to you could not have been any horrific what they did to God's son. And his son did nothing to nobody. You did something to somebody. Oh 
did. We check your record. You did a whole lot of evil to a whole lot of people. Uh huh. Can I get a? Don't look at the Bible now. You ain't trying to find no book now. Don't look down there now. All of a sudden, you searching the scriptures now. Hey, you did something. We all did something. We've all hurt people. Disappointed people. Told some lies. Maybe unintentionally. But you lied. Said you was going to do this. Money got tight. Couldn't do it. You never communicated. You just didn't do it. Amen. You hate your daddy there. It's been 40 years ago because he didn't buy you a bike. Yeah, I know. Because you're human. But you got to forgive him. I'm going to show you why it doesn't work. Show you why faith doesn't work. Galatians 5 and 5. <clears throat> you got it? Got it. Say got it. Got it. So we through the spirit. Somebody say spirit. Spirit. Wait for the hope of righteousness by what? By faith. By what? By faith. Oh. So because we have the spirit of God in us, we can wait for the righteousness of God by faith. Amen. Until we get it. Verse 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth any nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by what? Love. What? Love. How faith works? Love. Huh? Oh. oh, so you can't be sitting next to your sister hoping to slap her and talk about you got faith. I ought to slap that wig off your head. <laughs> But you speaking in tongues talking about you got faith. No, no, that's not the faith of God. Faith of God worketh by love. Somebody say love. love. God is love. and love is God. What is God? Love. What is love? God. Also, they're synonymous. Yeah. They go hand in hand. Amen. How does faith work? So you can believe all you want. But you can't hate people simultaneously talking about I believe God. Okay. Here's what the writer says. How can you say you love God who you've never seen? But you hate your brother that you see every day. How can that be? No man has seen God at any time. They might have thought they saw him. Had a dream. It was just the cornbread and beans they ate at 10.30 at night. That's all it was. Or them fried gizzards. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it was something you ate. You ain't seen God. No man has seen God at any time. Because we can't look on him in our sin. He's too holy. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we're getting ready to conclude now. Somebody say he's through. Go back to Hebrews. And we're through. I made good time. We're through. Hebrews 6. Amen. We know the story of Abraham. God has permitted Abraham and Sarah to become well aged but yet his promise is still good God's promise is not contingent upon your age God's promises are not contingent upon your ability God's promises are not contingent upon your education because most of us in here are occupying jobs right now that we're probably not totally qualified for but yet God blessed us God has made a promise to Abraham that Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations. You shall be. And we know that every shall is loaded. Oh, when God says it shall, it's going to happen. May not happen today. May not happen tomorrow. May not happen next week. May not happen next month. May not happen next year. But it's going to happen. And you and I are not going to die until it happens. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody should have got happy right there. A couple of times here lately, I thought the enemy was really trying to kill me. 
like the other day when I got sick. I ate, I ate some bad fish or something. I'm at work, you understand? I ate lunch and we was working overtime all of a sudden. Got dizzy. I said, what is this? I done ate. So I'm driving. Things doubling. Now hold on now. Get out to the job site. Then I start shaking. I said, well, hold on now. Hold on. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Don't let, <laughs> don't let me collapse out here. Ain't nobody out here. <laughs> so, you know, I prayed. Got a little better. And then, you know, the rest of the supervisors and my boss came. And, and I started getting cold. I said, man, what's happening? <laughs> cold. I said, what's wrong, what? I said, man, I don't feel too good, bro. And so then, you know, Montezuma's revenge started. Had to speed back to the building. <laughs> That's what she did to me yesterday. <laughs> oh, man, you know. So I call, I call for her last day. I say, I ain't feeling good. <laughs> she said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you need me to come get you? I said, no, I think I can make it. But I'm just slow rolling home, you know. <laughs> so I got in the car. And I couldn't put the key in the ignition. I said, hold on, man, hold on, man. What is this? I said, Satan, you a liar. I ain't going to die in my car in this parking lot. I got to get home. I started the car, pull the slow out, pull out, and stroll down the street. I said, forget this, I'm getting on the freeway. If I, if I die, I'm down the freeway trying to get home. I got it. <laughs> I got to the house, couldn't get the key in the door. I said, oh, man. So I came in, because she took my clothes. I said, man, you got to get to bed. You will look good. When I got in the bed, she put comforter and another cover on me. I'm just chilling, man. Woke up, then I'm burning up, sweating. I said, Lord, help me. Then all night, just back and forth to the bath, just back and forth. I said, that's food poison. So, uh, you know, but God delivered me because it ain't my time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's promises are unchanging. Say that with me. God's promises, God's promises concerning, me concerning me are unchanging. Are unchanging. Tell y'all, and I tell you all the time, and I'll tell you again. When you go to a special service, you need to take a little notebook with you. So if God gives you a personal word, you need to write it down. So when the devil comes to oppress your mind about what God is not going to do for you, say, hold on, devil. Here's what God said. I'm going to stand on this word. Got it? Yeah. Hebrews 6 and 13. Got it? <clears throat> let's, let's go up to 12. That you be not slothful. What is slothful? Lazy. Anybody? No, I ain't going to ask you that. <laughs> I wouldn't dare have you raise your hand. Because I'd have to cast that lazy demon out you. Saints aren't lazy. No saint should be got to be careful how I say that. You got to be on time to work. Amen. Because your testimony is at stake. People are scrutinizing your life when you say you're a believer. Amen. You can't do what other folk do. Right. You're supposed to be at work at 7 o'clock. At 7.59 and 45 seconds, you dashing toward the clock. Get out of the way, I got to punch in. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Amen. Enough said about that. I felt a, a holy hush come across the congregation. Yeah, holy quietness. Oh, what a change in my life. Lord, change to be on time. But that ye be not slow. But followers of them who through what? And what? Faith and what? Patience. What? Patience. Faith and what? Patience. Oh. What happens? 
Oh, so then the promises of God are not automatic. It's a systematic shift through faith and patience. We are, those of us who were on the selection committee for the new supervisors, and, and uh, you know, that's a very elite position. And so uh, out of 45 people, five people got selected. I know out of 50 people, five people got selected. So that meant 45 people were going to be mad. And boy, the hell storm started Friday. I'm filing a grievance. I'm filing a grievance. File all you want. File them. I mean, file every one of them. File it. We went through the whole process. We, we spent the last probably two months giving people the opportunity to apply, setting up the test. After the test was the interview. After the interview was the rankings. Everybody had a chance to do it. Some didn't do it. Okay. So now you want to raise Cain talking about you filing a grievance. File them. File every one of them. Because the way some of them people write, I wouldn't put nothing on paper and say my name was on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being facetious. I'm telling, there, there's a person who has a master's degree. And when my boss showed me what they wrote in that grievance, I think Joey, who cannot write, would have wrote it better than that. Master's degree. Through faith and patience, he inherited the promise. Promise is there. I will say it again, Nina. That job that you have now didn't just come. It's been there all the time. God just had to take you down a prescribed path to get it. First thing he had to do was work on Nina. The Spirit of God, through her pastor, gave Nina and her husband some instructions. They loved their pastor and first lady enough to heed the instruction that I gave them. And when they heeded the instruction, the floodgate opened up. Yeah. This ain't a fluke. This is real. If I can't speak into your life the oracles of God and your life get better, I'm not your pastor. She learned some lessons. Some things she had to fix. Some things she repented of. Some things she did wrong. She had to get them right. She knows what not to do now. Now she's on her way. They, they that live godly in this world must suffer persecution. Sister Bell has went through. But the job was there for her all the time. She just had to go through. She had to patiently endure. The backbiting, the slander, the innuendos, the gossip. But the blessing is her. She works with her pastor. Yeah, that can be a blessing and <laughs> it ain't a curse. But <laughs> but she know I ain't gonna let nobody get her. You know, that ain't gonna happen. Amen. The grace of God. I am anointed, you understand? Amen. Praise the Lord. And when I call the demon subject, they have to become subject. Amen. Amen. Who? Who? I ain't bragging. I'm just telling you. That's what the word of God says. Amen. Whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Yeah. That's the Bible. There ain't no bragging. It is what it is. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and act like Tiny Tim, like I ain't anointed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. She belongs to the kingdom. Nobody care about them devils. I don't. For when God, verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, who made the promise? God. Who made the promise? God. Who spoke it? God. Well, when God 
made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater. Who did he swear by? Himself. This is God talking. Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had, what happened? What? Wait on it. It's coming. Don't get discouraged. Because the first two, three, four, whatever. Hold on. It's there for you. The trying of your patience, trying of your faith works patience. It's coming. It's coming, daughter. It's coming. There are times and seasons, and they both have to line up for the believer. Could be your time and not your season. Could be your season and not your time. For verily swear, for men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath and by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to do what? Lie. Can God lie? No. If God said it he'll do it. If God spoke it He'll make it good. That's why the saints used to say, speak, Lord. Speak. Thy servant heareth. All I need is one word from the Lord. I don't need a whole lesson. All I need is just one word. That's why it's important to come to the house of the Lord, to hear the word of God. I don't care who's preaching. As long as the person is preaching is anointed, and they're preaching and teaching faith, no matter who the instrument is, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So without faith, it is possible. Oh, it's got to be possible. What? You can't please God without faith? Can't please God because you're cute? Huh? Because you got an expensive weave, you can't please God? Huh? What? 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 Because you got gators on, you can't please God? What? Your bands don't please him? <laughs> no, without faith, it is absolutely impossible to please God. When a man comes to God, he must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, the diligence of the seek comes when we make provisions to go to the house of God despite what we want to do. We don't have to come to church but two days a week. Generally, Bible study, Sunday worship. Why is that so hard? We do everything else we want to do. But when we get in trouble, who do we call? Oh, you don't call the movie theater you went to. Huh? Huh? Oh, you don't go to the, to the, to the basement of the, of the quarter party you went to. Why don't you ask them for prayer? Huh? Why don't you ask them to fast for you? Ask the nail tech to Pray for you. Lay hands on you. Yeah. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? This year, if we want something different, we've got to do something different. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. That's insane. You going to keep on eating poison, expecting to get better? Huh? What? You gonna keep on spending every dime you got expecting to be rich? You insane. Amen. But God is a God is a forgiving God. God is a healer and God is a multiplier. Amen. Let's stand. We're getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Listen, <clears throat> there may be somebody here today who says, Gee, Pastor, I don't have a the appropriate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be saved today. I want to be saved. I want to commit my life to the Lord Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to accept Jesus into my life as my personal Savior. I want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you, you can come. Just lift up your hand.